it is my immense pleasure and my honor to welcome all of you here all the dignitaries who have come far away especially to make this event a very successful I would um, would like to invite our eminent speaker, Wani Iris Manley Esquire. Wani Iris Manley Esquire is a TEDx and award-winning speaker on change, a business and IP lawyer, and a best-selling author. She's the founder of the speaking and global consultancy firm, The House of Inspirational Business, based in Paris. Wendy, Wendy, Wani Manley PA, a, um, a boutique business and IP law firm, and where inspiration meets law, which provides legal contract templates, resources, and education for entrepreneurs. Wani will be speaking on Code Red, the youth mental health crisis in the digital age. Please put your hands together for this awesome lady. Thank you for that very wonderful welcome. Um, I do have a slight change in my topic. I am gonna be talking about mental health, but it's not just about the youth. Because you know, as a good speaker, it's like sometimes you start going down one path and you start looking at the data and you'd be like, you know what? I just can't just speak about that. And so I'm gonna be talking about the state of the mental health for the total population, because right now we're in a global crisis in the midst of all the unprecedented change we've all been going through. And I want to start off today with this quote by American spiritual teacher Adi Ashanti. This is the end of your world as you know it. I first came across this quote in 2010 when I found a spiritual path. I grew up Christian, reading the Bible, Jesus. But in somehow 2009, a spiritual path found me, and I had a teacher from the UK, and I began to start studying different texts, um, the Bhagavad Gita, and began connecting with and with different spiritual teachers from India. And I began to read many different sacred texts. And there was this one particular quote that I came across with Adi Ashanti, and it was this one right here. And he was talking about it in the context of once you get on the spiritual path of enlightenment, how your whole world actually shifts because you're letting go of the ego and you're really connecting with your true self. And I thought to myself, that quote like really, really stuck with me. But for some reason, I felt like, because yeah, at that time, my world was ending because I wasn't able to connect to the old world that I used to because now I was doing mantras, I was learning Sanskrit, I wasn't at all. And I was just completely different. And I was going to retreats, I was going to satsangs, I was planning on going to India, all the whole nine yards, right? I just wasn't the same person as I was before. My African parents thought that I was actually in a cult because I was like looking at crystals and I was doing all those different things. But yet it was the end of my world as I knew it. But there was always something nagging at me and I just felt like there was just more. Fast forward to 2020. What happened in 2020, right? We had COVID. And that began the crescendo of really unprecedented change that we've all have been going through now, right? Let me ask you all, I mean, has, can anybody, 
anybody here has been escaping all the change you've been going through the last four years, right? First it was what, wear a mask. Then it was, you know, don't wear a mask, right? First it was, you know, stay at home. Then it was come back to work, right? Then it was like, okay, come back to work for two days a week, right? First it was, then it was open the schools. Okay, close the schools. Okay, then it was like, do this, do that, right? To the point to where, you know, everyone was like, wait, what are we doing here, right? And then, this is not clicking. Oh, there it is. Then came the whole onslaught of AI, right? And the digital world, the technology, which unbeknownst to many people, we were all being pretty much set up for that because what ended up happens, right? We all ended up working from homes, completely changing our fundamental way of actually connecting with each other, right? Changing the way we actually, we actually um, live our lives today. And so in the last four years, we've been, uh, we've been undergoing so much change to the point to where the most common theme with psychologists when it comes to the topic of change, what I normally speak on, is we're all going through change fatigue. Anybody can relate? Right? Aren't you guys tired of it? Right? If you're working for a corporation, you work in an institution, everything's being reorganized according to what? The tech, digital technology, right? And so now we find ourselves in the digital age. And this is not only our present, it's our future, and we're just getting started. You know, I follow astrology, and um, one of the top astrologers in the U.S., David Palmer, said, this is what he described in terms of, like, the amount of change that we are going to experience in the, 20, the, 2000, the 20s, what we're doing right now, from 2020 until 2030. He said, you know what, 2020 is like when you go on vacation and you get, take a, a taxi and you just arrive at the hotel. That was 2020. 2020, 2021 was you getting out of the taxi, go into the hotel, and go, and go into the concierge and check in. That was 2021, right? What, 2020 was locked down, then 2021 was the curfew, you know, the curfew and all of that, right? Um, then the shots and all that stuff rolled out. And he says, okay, 2022 was we finally get the keys to the room, and we're being, with our backs, being taken to get into the elevator, right? 2023, we're riding up the elevator, right? 2024, we're finally getting to our rooms. And now the party is just getting started, right? How many of you, I mean, look at where we are right now, right? We thought 2020 was the big change. And it's like, no, it's just beginning. Can you all feel that, right? And so this is where we are right now. We're at the point to where Digital, the digital technology is permeating every single aspect of our lives. And so we are at a point right now where in one aspect, it's really cool, right? I mean, look at the technology advances that actually is happening, right? Look at how we're interacting with the AI. Um, you know, you can, a lot of places now it's like you go places and it's just like there's nobody, there's no human there, right? And so we're looking at all the, even like with the medical field, right? And so how the technology advances is actually really helping out there. And so, but we're looking at a point to where the digital age is permanent every single aspect of our lives, changing how we relate to everything and to everyone. Like I said, it's brought many, many cool aspects, but what's happening underneath that is that there's a mental health crisis that is actually emerging as quiet as it is kept, to the point to where many are coining it to be the next pandemic or the actual real pandemic. Now, what are we talking about here, right? We're talking about literally every single aspect of our lives being connected to a phone, a smartphone, a computer system, everything, right? And, you know, we used to think that was just so far off the map, but it's not because right now we're being sold how for the ease of convenience and, and accessibility, having everything being accessed on an app, right? Your medical records, your education, your medicine, like everything right now is all being like, hey, let's all be connected, right? At the point right now, we have entire relationships being conducted purely by text, right? Nobody picks up the phone anymore, right? Everything is social media. You can't even go in right and just enjoy yourselves, right? Because guess what? You got to produce content to put it on social media. And it's not just influencers or young people. It's everybody. It's big corporations because guess what? That's where we're being ushered to, Right? But the sad truth of the matter is, is that there's an erosion of human connection, right? There's an, there's an, and it's just, it's creating a mental unwellness because guess what? 
We are human beings. We need human connection. We need human touch. And so right now, it's actually driving to a point to where mental health is really at an all-time, or mental wellness, as you say, it's really at an all-time, at an all-time low. You know, when we think about mental health, we think about really like mental disorders, right? So for example, I'm not staying here on a campus, I'm actually staying in a hotel. And the taxi driver today, um, I would tell him where I was coming here, and tell him where he knew where the place was. And he goes, yeah, and he's really speaking. And I told him, he's like, oh my God. He goes, my wife is going through that. I go, what do you mean? He says, she's going through, you know, he starts calculating how his daughter was 15 years old and how her mental health disorder came from uh, postpartum, right? And he said to me, I would rather take care of five disabled people, persons, than to take care of one person right now that has mental health issues, right? That is constantly in a state of depression. And suffice it, suffice it to say, most of the people are in a state of depression. You can call it mild, and you know, a lot of people don't really want to admit to it, right? And so let's look at what we're understanding what mental health really is. Mental health encompasses our emotional, our social and psychological well-being, influencing how we think, feel, and interact with the world. It's vital that every single stage of life affected by numerous factors, including genetics, environmental, and lifestyle changes in decisions. But in today's driven, data -dri digital-driven landscape, online interactions and social media stand out as a pivotal elemental really affecting and diminishing our mental wellness. So we're at the point right now where our mental health is directly linked because of the intersection with the digital technology, right? Because right now everything is ran with our phones and such, right? And so what do we have? It's, a, it's gravely affecting our influence in social interactions where we don't really have any, right? How many of you are sick of doing Zoom chats or Zoom, Zoom calls, right? I hate it. I'm so, I just want to throw my computer out the window, right? It's like nobody wants to meet anymore. Nobody wants to call people, right? Nobody wants to hug. And, you know, because of COVID, you know, I'm, I'm an American. I live in Paris. And, you know, we hug and kiss people. And it's like people are just like there's this arm's length distance, right, where we don't want to touch each other anymore because we're just all afraid, right? But we can text all day long. We can post on social media all day long. We can scroll to our heart's content, right? And so we're at the point right now, because we're all on social media and seeing what everyone's doing, we have very low self-esteem because what we're doing, we're suffering from comparisonitis, right? Because we're looking at everybody's incredible highlight reels, thinking like that's how the lives are all the time, right? And we're feeling depressed. We're like, the hell am I doing? You think like my life sucks, right? And so, yeah, we even have like less attention spans like of a jellyfish at the moment, right? Because there's so much information overload that's coming to us and we're constantly looking at this thing from the moment we wake up in the morning. I mean, who does? I do it, right? Number one, the alarm clock is on the phone, right? Grab it and I, hey, I scroll, I get on Facebook, I check my notifications. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm speaking about myself here, right? And so we can't even like read long texts. And I'm a lawyer and I'm supposed to be able to, but I can, I can like literally see there's a short attention span that I actually really have because it's just there's so much information overload, right? We have the worst sleep patterns in history, right? Everyone is suffering some kind of insomnia. Either you can't go to sleep at night. If you do fall asleep, you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning and I get it, that's a spiritual hour. That's great for like a couple of months. But when you start putting into like five or six years or for a freaking decade, there's an issue going on and it's medical. All right? Then you've got the, the isolation, right? Now, it's not all doom and gloom. I don't, want, I don't want people to walk away here from it, you know, and saying like, oh my gosh, like she's so pessimistic because you can see from my energy level, like I'm not, right? So there, like I said, is, I mean, number one, what I love about what's going on right now is because there's such a level of heightness and awareness about what's going on. I mean, self-care is like all over the world, right? Everyone's talking about self-care and living a soft life because we're recognizing that rest is productive. And what I like to add is actually highly you know, profitable, okay? And so we also have access to mental health um, resources and online support communities that wasn't quite there available, even though it's very, dis it's not uh, equally proportioned, because let's just be real, where the money is, the resources are there, right? And the people, the, low, the lower socioeconomic status, they don't quite get the resources, but we know it. that's just how really how our society really is, right? But here's the thing, and here's what I'm actually focusing on, because I myself too, I'm, I'm super happy all the time, but I can tell you for myself, this is showing up for me in a loss of vitality, right? 
So you don't have to be crazy to think about mental health and think like you're super depressed, but I can, you can look at the state of the world because for me right now, I'm like, oh my God, like the world is going to hell in a handbasket, right? I mean, look what's happening. We've got Ukraine, you've got Gaza, you've got like the, the US, like we're killing each other with mass shootings like every, you know, every, every minute. Right. And so for me, it's like it's really hard to feel very powerful if you're very hopeful about a future. When every time I, I look on the news or I turn on my I, anything, it's like you're looking at some kind of like death and destruction. And I'm not one of these people that can just say, OK, don't watch the news, because like I feel like it's very irresponsible. I feel like there's so much going on, especially if you're living a very great life and you're very privileged. There are those people that are actually underprivileged and we can't turn a blind eye to the atrocities that's actually are, ha are happening. Right. We have, like I said, information overload. We have addiction to screens. We have a loss of, of human interaction. And holy cow, alcoholism is on the rise, right? And we're not talking about, when we talk about alcohol abuse, like most people are thinking, you know, like the real alcoholics, right? The ones that like just like black out, you know, and like they don't remember anything. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about self-soothing. Every night, having one or two glasses of wine, right? And it's like, it's so okay. I live in Paris. It's like, it's like water. Like you go to a cafe, like before you put your butt on the chair, it's like, on that, they don't mean water. They mean a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. you, but it's just such a common thing, you know? And it's like, we're, we're self-soothing because we really don't want to feel what's going on with us underneath. Let's look at some statistics here now, because this is all data people, right? These are all, you all are scholars and PhDs and doctor this and doctor that, right? Some sad statistics. In the U.S. alone, 90% of the public believes there's a mental health crisis going on in America and in the world. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death between youth aged 10 to 14. This is the saddest thing I've seen in my entire life. What is a 10-year-old how is it possible a 10 year can feel that they have absolutely nothing to live for to actually like to create their, to end their lives, right? But that's just where we are. Right now for the social media, adolescents are, you know, are the ones who are really, the millennials that are really like uh, coded into the, the social media. After one hour of social media, they instantly feel depressed. Again, the thing in our life sucks because everyone looking at everyone's Instagram and the highlight reels and everything's luxury, this and like, listen, I live in Paris. I have no problem with all of that, but it's not the real life and it's not the real depiction of how people really live. One out of three girls have body image issues from using Instagram. Kids are actually dying from buying illegal drugs from Snapchat. Did you know, I did not know this, by the way, speaking of drugs, that the Uber eats people. If you wanted to get drugs, like there's a whole underground from Uber Eats, they would just deliver it to you. And that's how kids are getting drugs, you know, as well too, right? Substance abuse is at an all-time high with college students to deal with the stress and anxiety and alcoholism. 44% of people are feeling depressed and hopeless. And over one half of adults with mental health problems receive no treatment whatsoever. This is where we are. I mean, I looked at the agenda and I see a lot of, a lot of us here are, are talking about this. And this is dominating everywhere. I mean, I don't only speak on change and I, I, didn't, I never found myself speaking on mental health, but it's so important because it's affecting everyone. And I think we really need to really start putting um, a collective eye on it. And so what are we talking here, right? It's loss, right? Collectively, we're going through a traumatic loss from what our lives actually used to be like from four years ago, right? We're being urged or we're being like actually kicked into a new world, a new paradigm. First of all, many of us never ever saw it. And we're a very safe or psychological safety is actually just being threatened. And instead of dealing with it, we're being told to get on with it right? We're being told change, adapt, or be left behind, right? If you work in an organization, like there changes an, op an operational system, you know, and if you don't, you know, get onto par with it, you could be made redundant, right? And everyone's op operating a sense of fear and no one's really dealing with it because for somehow it's like you're not supposed to. And so what kind of loss are we talking about here? These are like the very, the top seven that when I was looking to this issue, this is really, really, really prevalent. Number one, talking about loss of uh, safety and security. We're looking at our loss of identity, our loss of belonging, freedom and autonomy, fairness, and status. Now, let's talk about safety and security. At the fundamental level, we need to feel safe, right? On a practical level, what does that look like? Our jobs, how much money we make, 
Listen, we're all spiritual folks that have been here, right? We believe in some higher power and we can trust that all the resources and all the abundance comes from a higher power. But I guarantee you, when there's no money in the bank, you start to freak out, right? Right? And so what's being threatened now with all the jobs is that, you know, in fact, Goldman Sachs said, um, if AI is actually going to deliver on its promise, over 300 million jobs will be lost, the labor force will be lost in Europe and the United States. And so it's true. I mean, I'm not I'm saying it's true, but in terms of like most of the jobs are going to be taken over by AI, right? At least for like the bottom half. And so our sense of safety and security to be able to provide for ourselves is actually being threatened. I got to hurry. Loss of identity. We don't know who we are anymore because guess what? We all have to change to fit into this new world. My mom is a nurse, right? And everything is now on that iPad. And my poor mom, she's just so slow with it, right? And it's like, you know, we, we have to change our identity so that you to merge into being like what we're not expected to be. And that's like these, all these tech savvies, right? And we have to let go of what the life really was. And, so, and the thing about it's like we cling on to all of that, right? All of us here, we all have what, you know, degrees and things like that, right? But we cling on to, right, to our, our titles. And in some respects, if some of these um, jobs are going to be uh, taken away from us, we're just going to like, what are we going to do, right? The next loss is the loss of belonging. Like, where do we belong right now, right? You know, as much as we want to stand out, we also want to feel like we belong a part of something. And right now, we're not feeling like we belong anywhere because it's like we're like, we're like a, fish out of, uh, a fish out of water, Sorry, I gotta hurry. Loss of freedom. Anybody who does all the censorship, right? You can't, you can't talk about certain things, right? I mean, you can't even talk about what's happening in Gaza, right? Nothing, right? How we travel, but we're being sold of, you know, it's all, we're all connected, but we're losing our freedoms one by one. The WHO is trying to take, wants to take away, you know, country sovereignty, right? And for us to all be like this one big, government type thing, right? Then there's a loss of status. You know, you text someone who's been at the job for like, you know, 20 years and built a reputation, you bring in an operating system and they're no longer, they're obsolete. Do you think that person gonna be willing to cooperate within a, corp within a company in terms of like, what kind of like operations happen? No, they're not. So, loss of fairness. What's fair anymore, right? We don't have any privacy anymore, right? Look what happened to the Princess of Wales with her, with her medical records being people trying to obtain that, right? It's like we're just losing, like little by little, like the things that we're really, we used to have. And so I want to conclude with, you know, that this is not going to take, we have to recognize what really is going on. And it has to be like a collective effort. It's more than just okay, do a digital detox, right? But really understanding, like from a psychological perspective, what is really happening here was like, we're grieving. We're, there's a sadness going on here. And until we begin to really address like the safety within that, and we have to understand, we really have to use a digital age responsibly, right? I also want to say we have to find balance. Find balance between the digitals, the technology, and ourselves, and not to just to remember at the end of the day, what's gonna keep us going is actually human connection and looking out for one another. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Put your hands together for her. She takes a seat. The next award goes to Dr. Wani Amani. My name is Wani Iris Manley, and I am here at the 2024 Global Research Conference at Oxford University. I had an incredible time here. You know, this is actually my second conference speaking um, with the Global Research Center, and um, I really, really enjoy this one because it had different elements to it. I love the different podcasts um, that we're able to do along with actually talking to different topics. There were so many incredible speakers here, and like the main message, the main takeaway that I actually got from it was that. You know, the digital features, digital, te digital technology is actually here to say we actually have to use it responsibly and to remember to keep the human touch and not to be afraid of it and to move into the future with actual optimism and instead of actually like any kind of fear whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you.